Hi, Doug Binks here. I'm going to show off some of the things that we've been doing in Avoid recently. Or more accurately, I'm going to show off some of the things that I've been doing in Avoid recently. So, first thing that you can see is those AIs in the background. It's a, a blue friendly one here. And if I hover my cursor over them, you can see that uh, we get a health bar and that fades away as he goes behind the scenery. And that, that was motivated in part by what we've seen of Destiny. I really liked the way that their uh, health bar system worked. It means that you can't see something that's behind terrain by getting a pop of a health meter, but you can see things that are close enough that you can get a cursor over them. And having a little bit of an idea of what health they've got really helps with combat. If I can shoot them, that is. Okay, I'm going to leave that guy go. Okay, so destruction, I think, is just really important and really crucial, and voxels give you that capability. So I've turned one of my projectile weapons, uh, alternate fire, into something that uh, creates large holes and does so quickly. So I can really carve out this environment. And uh, I can imagine that some of the more powerful weapons that you might get later on in some of the games could do, could do this, and it could be very, very, very effective. And this works very well over the network because we're just sending these messages as to uh, changing the voxel field in a particular area. And that uh, is a very small amount of data that needs to be sent across the network to make that change. Okay, so drones. We took a little look at them earlier. They've got a very simple AI at the moment. I'll just speed up to get closer to them. Drones are essentially voxel worlds in their entire, in their own right. This guy here is a manga sponge. One, two, three level manga sponge with a little uh, black ball put in the middle. This is the one that I shot earlier. He's got a little bit of a hole out of him. Poor guy. I think I should really finish him off. Now, what I hope to do in the future is have it so that the health is actually related to the body parts. So here's a friendly guy over here. And uh, you can see that they have in the center this black eye. Now this is all my own programmer artwork so it's something that uh, will change for much better stuff later on. But you can imagine that that black central part could be the part that uh, when you damage that, that's how you destroy them. But the outer shell, I, I'm sorry my friend, the outer shell part may not actually be something that damages them. These, these round ones as well, here, I have to shoot through to get into that nice, luxurious core where I can do some decent damage. Now, the, these collisions are actually voxel perfect. So um, my cursor, though, doesn't actually accurately represent the location of where I'm shooting since my laser beam is actually physically coming from my right-hand side. But you can see that I can shoot through the holes into the center there making the Manga Sponge guys slightly easier to hit because their square shape is slightly bigger, but slightly harder to hit because I can actually shoot through them from some angles. In fact, you can actually go through them from some angles. Oh, he's decided to turn around. Damn him. I really am a bad shot. Okay. The basic AI that we have does really only three things. The first thing it does is it searches for an enemy. And that search is just a random changing of direction until it discovers somebody within its view cone. Second thing it'll do is they will hunt down the target that they've selected. So this guy here looks like he's got a target because he's not changed his velocity. That target could be somewhere away. He'll approach the target at a slightly faster speed that is normal cruising search speed, and then he'll shoot. Here we go, he shot him. And he's been shot at and damaged as well. The other thing that will do, the third behavior, is simply avoidance. Now, this is avoidance rather than collision um, detection. Basically, they do a single raycast, and when they find themselves raycasting in front of them and hitting some geometry, um, in this case, actually, I'm only raycasting and testing against the world, although it's pretty fast to raycast and test against everything in, in the system as well. 
once they find that there's something in front of them within about, uh, well, it depends upon their velocity, but let's say it's about uh, half a second in front of them. If there's something that's half a second in front of them, then they'll turn around and uh, flee to the right and backwards. So I think this, no, that guy's not gonna go for something. This guy might do, okay, so he might be heading for some geometry and he'll turn and his right actually is the other way up because he's actually upside down in comparison with me. Difficult to tell with this one because uh, he's actually circularly symmetric. Later on, I might add a, a slight randomness to whether they go right or which direction they do go in. But it has to be consistent direction during a particular collision because if they change their minds as to, as to which direction they're going in when they're colliding, then they'll just hesitate. And that hesitation means that they'll end up colliding with the wall rather than avoiding it. And we don't want that. Although we might want it in some senses if you have perhaps uh, bots that are somewhat damaged mentally or uh, but by which I mean you've shot them in the brain then uh, they may exhibit some different behaviors perhaps. Ah, just shot my friend. I'm very sorry there. You'll also notice the trails. Trails are actually what we use for the projectiles as well but the trails are the things behind the, uh, the drones. And they're red in the case of my enemy and blue in the case of my friend. So this is a red versus blue, typical colors for FPS. And the trail system is pretty simple. And uh, it's just a um, anti-aliased line, which is updated to follow the path of the transform of the object. And it works really well to both tell you where things are going and also as an AIB debug tool. One of the things I find myself doing is uh, lengthening those trails to see what's going on. And then I can also pause the updating of the system for the trails so that, that they hang in midair and then I can wander around and investigate what's happening. That was great for debugging the uh, collisions. All right, so, so damaging these guys, that's all, that's all quite fun. But that's only really one of the things that we can do since we have systems for editing the world. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to make a runtime change now. So this is with uh, runtime compile C++. I'll save it out or compiling changes come forwards. And what I've changed there is I've now changed it so that my alternate fire, rather than creating a large hole, will actually create a small sphere. So there we are. We're drawing on the surface there. But the other thing I can do is, let's say my friend here is damaged, I can re-health him. Looks a bit ugly, but there, his health's gone up. And you can shoot it off as well. And uh, I imagine that we'd want that to look a little bit less like he's growing some warts, but uh, it could be a really useful game tool, provided you have the materials necessary to do that. And I'd probably make that beam a little less fast so that it wasn't so easy to do. This guy also needs a little bit of a health up. Okay, so let's change back to damaging. And let's make a hole for this guy so we can go through that. They're only testing at the moment a area straight in front of themselves. <laughs> now I've shot this one with uh, the overpowered projectile weapon and he's basically almost dead but he's only got he's got a tiny part of himself left and that is really tough to hit. <laughs> you actually have to hit the box wall. It's not just the bounding box collision here and finally uh, one of our friendly bots managed to get him. Okay so that's it for today's update. Hopefully that's showing you some of the things that you can do with these voxel systems. Uh, perhaps we'll make another video soon and uh, put that up on YouTube. Check us out on our website at nkisoftware.com and feel free to follow myself at, uh, at Doug Binks on Twitter or Avoid Game.